Mark Helson. Great to meet you. And you. Thanks yeah. for being here. Thanks very much. And I love, love what you've got here with the art. It's a very cool, very cool environment. It must be pretty inspiring to work from here. Yeah, it's pretty awesome to live in your studio as opposed to from painting from home. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so Umfa is all about inspiring people to achieve extraordinary things. So who and what during your life and career has inspired you? I think I've always enjoyed the Kiwi Can Do attitude and, and that in itself is inspiration. My dad always you know, built the house and worked on the car and I did the same. And I just love how Kiwis get off their house and do things. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And what about art in particular? I mean, uh, you obviously got a pretty unique style. So what artists, whether living or, or dead, have inspired you during, during your career? When I started, you know, having no formal training, I just started painting and, you know, it was a bit of a mess, to be perfectly honest. And then I sort of fell in love with a few different artists and I sort of thought, well, you know, if, if the four of us sat at the table and we all sketch the same sketch, you know, what would that look like? And so I just merged what I thought everyone would do and that was the start of my brain. Okay, um, and any artists in particular that you sort of... My favourite artist at the time was an Australian artist, William de Bell, and um, his work is just magical for me. You know, we all like different things, and yeah. you know, and, and for me, everything just clicked. I, I enjoyed Picasso, I couldn't really understand him, but I, but I realised that imagination was more important than knowledge, and so um, he was a wonderful addition just to sort of like steal ideas from and concepts. Yeah, awesome. And, t and tell me more about your story, because I mean, you were obviously in the business world and then, and then become an artist. So how, how did that start and how did you develop your style of, of oil portraits and so on? Um, originally, 15 years ago, I was sitting in a restaurant waiting for my meal. I made a comment about the painting on the wall that a child probably painted it. I, I then wondered whether I could actually paint a painting. I didn't take art at school. I, I sort of believed that art was something that um, you were born with or not, and I thought I'm clearly not. You know, I like mathematics and science. And so um, I tried to paint a painting. It was meant to be of a woman with red hair. It looked like a lizard with a red helmet after about four hours. And I was so frustrated because I just thought, you know, Kiwis, you know, we can do anything. And I obviously couldn't. And then um, realising that I'd only tried it once, um, I just tried again. And my second was better than my first. My third was better than my second. And you know, at that stage, I got it an Excel spreadsheet. And I thought, if I can get better by you know, 10% per painting, what would that mean after 100 paintings? And, what it means is you'd be better off by 1,278%. And so I just started looking for the 10% and my paintings just got better and better and better and, and uh, yeah, look for 1% now. Mm, amazing. And was it a hard decision to leave that, the business world and, and, and become a professional artist? Um, well, sort of yes and no. Um, I, I think anything that you do that's so outside of what you normally do you know, really does grab your attention. But I'd, I'd spend quite a lot of time just planning on planning basically you know where I wanted to end up and, and how I thought that should go going to different colleagues of mine that I really respect and asking them to pull my plan apart and give me mm -hmm. ideas and, and most of them thought it was an, an appropriate thing to do and, and um, it, yeah kind of makes you more determined really. Yeah yeah absolutely and I can imagine um, those early days were, were pretty challenging at some point so what were some of the struggles that you went through when you were sort of going through that? Um, well, I really didn't have any struggles at the start. I, I think I just had a fabulous start. You know, everything okay. just went so amazingly well. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Um, I had always planned on being an international artist, so I immediately went overseas. And of course, when you turn up overseas, even though you've been painting for a few months, you're, you're, you're an international artist just by the default position of hopping on a plane and arriving there. And so, um, yeah, I have very ambitious goals and, and you need a, an air of confidence to you. It's easier to do that overseas than it is to do it at home. Okay, and um, I mean, you tell the story about that first painting you did with the, the Lady of Red Hair and so on and then getting 10% better and 10% better, but uh, you know, like when you, at what stage did you um, do more education or upskilling and, and if you did, how did you go about doing that? Uh, was it literally a matter of just continuing to buy canvases and, and some paint and giving it a go or were there more uh, Initially I, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't influenced by anyone because I really believe that you can be unique if you're naive. Okay. Being naive means that you're going to turn up and do something completely different to everyone else. But there's a point where you need to stop being like that and get some really good instruction because we, we know if you have really good practices, really good techniques, that you'll get a really good result. Mm -hmm. And so it makes sense to go and befriend you know, some really good artists, sit and watch how they paint, look at their techniques, bring those techniques home and adapt it to your, your way of painting. Okay, um, so just on that point, I mean, what would some advice be for someone who's never painted before but wants to get into art? What would you say to them? I think 
For, for me, it's like start now, start before you feel ready. Most people have to be in the right environment, they have to have a room set up or they've got to have an easel. And, and no, you don't, you just need one canvas and two tubes of paint and one brush and just start, you know, start with whatever you have, but start now because as soon as you start, you know what to do next. It's very simple to look at what you've just done and think, how could I make this better? And you'll have tons of ideas. I don't believe that you should ever get involved in trying to how to fix things. You should just extend off what works. So, so a technique that I used at the start was, I would just finish a painting and think, you know, what's the best bit about this painting? Whatever that is, I'll start with that on my next painting. Mm -hmm. So if you lined all the paintings up side by side, there was just this logical step, you know, based on just taking every best bit out of the painting and putting it into the new painting. Okay, well, yeah. So for someone who is, I guess, a seasoned artist wanting to take their, their art to the next level, I mean, what would you say to them as someone who's maybe in a bit of a right? Well, I think... I think you need to have an understanding of what next level actually means. Okay. When I started and thought, you know, I'd like to be serious and I'd like to become a full-time artist, I had to ask myself, what does that actually mean? Yeah. And so what I did was I, I just got out a couple of bits of paper and I just thought, you know, in 21 years' time I turned 60 years old. If I could evolve into anyone, what would that be? And um, once again, that was kind of difficult. But I, and So I just hopped on the internet and looked up, you know, all the leading artists around the world of what they do and how they do it and yeah. just thought, you know, I'd like to do that, and um, so I just wrote all those things down on my plan. You know, there, there's living artists that sell paintings for more than a million dollars a piece, mm -hmm. and so you know, you, you feel a little bit um, weird writing that down initially at the start because you have no credibility. You're selling paintings for a few thousand dollars and, and thinking that you're going to sell them for a you know, million dollars. But I know that you know, if you do the same as someone else, you'll get similar results, and so having a vision of where you want to end up is no more than a roadmap or a guidance to what direction to look in. So I just wrote out this whole plan of what I wanted to do and where I wanted to do it and, and even though it was miles outside of where I was now, um, you know, you have to evolve into that position. Mm -hmm. And what about the process of um, marketing and selling the paintings? I mean, you've, I've talked to you a bit about that before, just about taking, you know, sales to the next level. How did, how did you go about that? Well, I think... One of the easiest things that you have is you have a product that, that other people may want. So so it's very easy to swap paintings with people that are far smarter than you for that sort of guidance and understanding. It's um, um, I get credited with being really good at marketing and, and bluntly the only thing I did at the start of my career was give every fifth painting away to every high profile charity that I could find. And if I'm to be honest, I did it to get in front of the right people, so to speak. And I realised that I was starting to get back more stuff than I was actually given mm. and then um, I realised that, that, that the real reason for doing it is I just felt good for doing it and it's amazing how if we can do these things that make us feel good then that sort of just carries over into our next day and, and I think it's just a much better place to operate from. Mm. Okay and what about you talk about getting in front of the right people I mean how do you go about increasing those high profile sales I can imagine if Kim Kardashian came and bought a piece the sales would go through the roof. Yeah I, I guess um, uh, once again, it's really good to have an understanding of who you want to sell your paintings to. So, yeah. for example, if you want to go down the track of um, New Zealand art patrons, um, then you need to find out where they hang out. Okay. And so, if then you can get your work in front of them at, in those venues, then you're going to get noticed. Okay. And, um, you know, like, if, let's say let's say someone comes and buys a painting who's really high profile and it gets all in the media around the world, and then all of a sudden you've got 100 or 200 orders. I mean, in terms of building a business with art, it, are you able to employ some people to help you out and, and do the paintings as well? Or if, I'm, or if I'm buying a piece from Mark Olsen, do I expect you to do it? Like, how does that work with an art? Yeah, you know, artists have different um, regimes and it really just depends on how much demand there is for their work. Okay. Um, um, at, at this stage, I, I still enjoy doing everything. Yeah. Um, but um, in, in busier environments, I've, I've had help with just cleaning up and preparation. You know, there's so much... Um, donkey work to do it other than just physically painting. Yeah, okay. And in terms of actually creating the piece itself, can you talk us through how you sort of go about that and uh, how you're interacting with sort of how humans look at things and so on? Yeah, well, I spent a lot of, I spend a lot of time listening to audiobooks while I paint and um, one of the wonderful things with that is you just get tons of ideas. And usually after you've finished a painting, you, you, you look at the painting and think, ah, oh, I could have done that better, I should have done this different, or, or whatever the case might be. Yeah. So you always have four or five ideas after you finish a painting of how you could have done it better. Yeah. And that means after 10 paintings, you've got 50 or 60 ideas floating around in your head. And, 
and it just quickly gets to the stage where you've just got more ideas than you can actually produce. Okay. Um, and one thing um, we've talked about before is just how, how sort of people look at art and the way their eyes go from the side of the canvas to the other and so on. Is that Did you study sort of human science and stuff? And yeah, how look at I, things? I listen to a lot of books on neuroscience about how the brain sees things. So, for example, those of us in the Western um, society, we, we view things from left to right because we're familiar with reading from left to right. We're in this habitual status. So to me, that makes sense that the right-hand side of the painting should be where your focal point is. If there's any movement in the painting, it should be on the right-hand side. And so there's, there's a whole lot of small things like that that will always assist in, in how people view your work. But, I mean, ultimately, I, I think you've just got to do what you love. Mm. And, um, yeah, and just before we get into our quick five questions, I'm just keen to chat a wee bit more about change. And obviously we talked before about how you left your work job in the business world and become an artist. So do you see lots of opportunities in New Zealand for people to change jobs these days? I think anyone, you know, one of the reasons behind why I want to be so successful is to be a living example that anybody can learn to do every, anything. Yeah. And, and I mean, any of us can do anything. But, you know, you just need a little bit of courage, you just look at, need a bit of planning, you need a bit of support. But most of all, you just need to get on with it. Mm. And so um, I like the concept of just going, I really love doing this thing. How do I do that more? Yeah. And, and then working out a way to make that into a business. Yeah. And what was that personal drive for you to actually do that change? I mean, was it, the, was it a love for art or was it? I, I have a love for just doing stuff. You know, I don't think I'm particularly good at anything, but, but I just can't stop doing things. And I, and I never want to stop. And so for me, it was... I love painting, you know, I love creating, I, I love how you get ideas, I, I have no idea where ideas come from, but I just love how you get bombarded with ideas and then you just sort of like can't wait to make them, you know, manifest on a canvas and yep. and yeah, it's, it's addictive. Okay, and um, just finally, I mean, for people who are hating their job, wanting, wanting to make a change, I mean, from your experience, I mean, what would you say to them? Well, I think it's important to, to have a vision of where you want to end up, you know, if, if if you don't like your job, for example, but you do like doing something else, then you need to work out how can you do just a little bit more of it, and then you'll find a way to do just a, even a little bit more of it, and then slowly, you know, ideas that will be formulated around that love of doing that thing. Awesome. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So I've just got a few quick five questions to finish. Um, I just quote want to read this quote from you where you said, "I've found creativity to be merely the defeat of habit, exploring where wrong can become right." Can you just explain that a little bit? Artists starting out always have this temptation to break all the rules and what I find is that the people that can break the rules the best are the ones that know them the most. And so first of all you need to know the rules or, or the rules that are applicable to what you're doing. And then you can ask yourself you know, um, questions of how not to do things. So for example I have a lot more ideas on how not to paint a painting than I do on how to paint a painting. So if I go how would I not apply this paint? I might use a device that's not a paintbrush. And out of doing that, you may find that you just find something new. So, so whenever you look where no one else looks, you'll always find things. And so for me, the key is how would I not go about this? And of course you have weird and wonderful ideas that you could never put into practice, but occasionally you go, ooh, actually I could do this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in summary, what would be your sort of top three bits of advice for, for people wanting to become better artists? What would you say? Well, first of all, know where you want to end up and be able to have a vision of, of that and, and to be able to describe that well. You know, when you can understand where you want to end up, it's very easy to point in that direction. But most importantly, start before you feel ready. Okay. Start now. Start with whatever you've got, but just start. Starting's everything. Yeah, yeah. And can everyone do it, or, or everyone? Some... Everyone okay. can do it. Everything is learnt behaviour. You know, you, you don't know how to do anything other than the fact that you learnt to do it. Now, some people learn really fast, and society says that they're really gifted. Other people, like myself, learn slower, and we need to persevere through that. But, but ultimately, just starting's the key to success. Yep. And what's the most misunderstood thing about art in the world, do you believe? I, I guess that only a select group of people can do it, that you're born with an artistic talent or not. That, that's just nonsense. You can learn to do anything. Yeah. Envision a unique style, would you say that's really important? Very much. So, so in the art world, you need something that's synonymous with your name. And that's really simple. You just don't do what everyone else does. So you sit there and you think, well, 
how do I start? Well, maybe if I just merge three people's work together, at least that's a starting point. As soon as you start, then you can go, well, you know, what's the best bit of this? I'll extend with that to the next painting. Yeah, yeah, okay. And do you yourself, I mean, do you have any sort of artistic rituals or, or things you do before you paint to get into that sort of a zone? Or? You know, I try my hardest to be as lackadaisical as possible, and, yeah. but I find that it's because it's something you enjoy doing, you want to do it more. And so um, I have no trouble being motivated, you know, it's just, it's, it, you just can't stop it. Okay. But no, no, no particular rituals at all. Yeah, and any, any way you paint, sort of, do you, I mean... I paint it? with the canvas upside down, um, yeah. and when I started I wanted to be different than everyone else, but I didn't know how to paint, let alone be different. And so the only thing I could think of was turning the canvas around. <laughs> and um, it, it wasn't hard, I, you know, it's not as if I had any bad habits to break, I had no habits at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And why do you, why do you paint upside down? Well, uh, according to neuroscience, um, we see with our memory, you know, our eyes go and get the data and then we associate. So when something's upside down, you have nothing in your memory. So you're kind of like a child, really, where you just have nothing on the memory shelf. And so, for example, when, when a painting's upside down and I'm going to design here, I can think about, um, you know, if I was an ant going down a water slide, how would I like to go down? And so I can make here with plenty of squirrels and what have you, purely based on the fact that it's this ant going down a water slide. It's very easy to do that when the canvas is upside down. When it's up the right way, it looks like it should be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. And um, who's your favourite, um, I guess, yet to be discovered artist of late? Someone who you've been sort of following? Is there anyone who's been. Who's worked um, there's a New Zealand artist, Jeff Williams, and I, I really adore his work, I, I adore his skill level. He does cross hatching, so he paints thousands of little brush strokes, and right. you know it's yeah, it's a phenomenal skill. Yeah, yeah, awesome. And what would the sixteen-year-old Mark Olson think of the man you've become today? He would be very shocked. Yeah, yeah I left school to ride my motorbike, and and um, now I've turned into this artist and a learning maniac. And yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, I think the sixteen-year-old would would not understand. Okay, would you give him a bit of advice? What would you say to him? Yeah, I'd say get off your ass and start learning. Okay. You know, um, I started learning miles too late. You know, it, it, most days I listen to audio while I'm painting. Right. I wish I had have done that as a 16 year old. Okay, so I wish I had have picked up a paintbrush as a 16 year old. Right, so important for, for people who are young in particular to start learning now. And then and never stop. And, and I think what happens when you become a true student, you, ju you don't want to stop anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you just can't put enough on. Yeah, very true. So, last question before we uh, finish off. Um, What's what's a what's something that, that you believe to be true that not many people agree with you on? That anybody can do anything. Okay. Most people believe that you have to be born in the right house or have the right talent or have the right environment. And that's just nonsense. You just need to get on with it. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Okay, Mark Olson, to finish off, can you please look down this camera here and tell us, in summary, what are your wise words for the people of New Zealand? <laughs> have a plan. Start now. Have fun. Thanks so much. Cheers. Cheers.